Welcome to Triad All-Stars. Where are they now? Hosted by Ryan Smith. Hello and welcome back to Triad All-Stars. My name is Ryan Smith and joining me today is former Glenn High School football and baseball uh, standout and now a country music singer. He is Chris Lane. Chris, how are you? I'm doing great, uh, buddy. How are you? I'm doing well. It's so good to have you on. Let's just jump right in. So growing up in Kernsville, North Carolina, you have a twin brother named Corey. Uh, talk about growing up in Kernsville and just how sports kind of began into your life. Uh, we'll start there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So born and raised right there in Kernsville and uh Still, my parents still live there. Um, I love every chance I get to go back and visit. Um, you know, I, I've been able to travel the world at this point touring, and um, I'm super proud of of where I grew up at and, and where I come from. Um, it makes me feel so lucky and so blessed to have grown up in, in such a wonderful place. Um, and then as far as uh, getting into sports, you know, my brother and I, uh, I believe ever since we were uh babies we were super competitive with each other and uh you know grew up playing football baseball and basketball um and and to kind of you know shorten a long story that i could probably tell um we grew up in those three sports uh felt like we excelled at all of them and then we got into uh high school and just chose to play football and baseball and uh my brother he played quarterback i played receiver you know yep. we had that little twin connection going on um mm-hmm. so we so we had four great years of of high school football and um heck i still reminisce about it all the time those were some of the best days of my life <laughs> uh, um, yeah and, and then uh you know four years of high school baseball and uh we both had the opportunity to move on and play football and baseball in college but chose to uh, just play baseball. I had just come off my second ACL reconstruction, and I decided, you know what, uh, baseball is going to be a little bit easier on my knee. Sure. And uh, we both went down to UNC Charlotte uh, where they had uh, – I played center field and my twin brother played second base, and uh, both of those positions were going to be open uh, freshman year. So we both got to go in and start right away and uh, – and yeah, I mean, we we both love Charlotte. Uh, had successful careers there. You know, I think as kids, we both had that dream of moving on and playing professional baseball. Uh, music, something that I'd never really thought of um, because I was just so into sports. Right. Um, but I knew I loved singing along to the radio and stuff like that. I just never knew what it could potentially turn into. So I graduate college. Uh, my twin brother, he got drafted chose not to play um my chances are kind of hurt after uh quite a few surgeries but you know i was able to play all four years of of uh, of baseball there at charlotte and made it through all of them but was just kind of hurt always in the off season kind of vibe but um needless to say we both graduated from charlotte there and and moved back home to kernersville uh where i just started working and uh, at the time I was learning how to play the guitar and that kind of snowballed into, to, you know, getting my first show out and, and, uh, you know, the rest kind of happened from there. Just put a lot of hard work into it. Yeah. And, uh, you kind of got, uh, a lot of, uh, my questions I was going to ask. So no, that's good that you, the listeners kind of got a nice full view. Um, so we'll circle back around, uh, to Glenn high school. Sure. You mentioned, uh, UNC Charlotte, um, where all happens to be my alma mater as well. You did go there for baseball, as you said, you and your brother. Um, and then, like you said, after graduating there, you learned to play guitar. Uh, the sports injuries kind of affected your chances playing professional baseball. Um, but in um, going back to Kernsville, you worked for your father's landscaping business, and that's where you started a cover band that played at High Point University Cafeteria. And so you kind of started your music career uh, uh, that way, and I was kind of like – I'll kind of let you open the floor there. Um, yeah. You were, how did music kind of get after playing the guitar and kind of learning, how did that music uh, career kind of take off? Give us like a, you know, 20,000 foot view of kind of how that happened. 
Yeah. So um, flashback to, you know, just graduating college. Uh, I had no idea what the heck I wanted to do um, as far as uh, work goes and what kind of job I was going to take. But, um, you know, for the time being, I jumped in. Uh, my dad had a company called Lane and Sons Landscaping. <laughs> and he still has it to this day, still running it there around around Kernersville. Um, but uh, we, my brother and I, we both chose to just kind of jump in there, help him out with that until we could figure out exactly what we wanted to do. And, um, you know, at the time, uh, I started learning how to play the guitar just for fun. Um, I'd always wanted to. Uh, I'd been to several, you know, country concerts growing up. Uh, Kenny Chesney, Keith Urban, you know, Eric Church, just to name a few. And uh, they inspired me just to want to learn how to play the guitar. But I was never thinking to myself, oh, I'm a great singer or I can sing. None of that. It was just, you know. I enjoyed playing the guitar and learning how to do that and, and uh, spending all my extra time, free time uh, learning that. And I had no idea what that was eventually going to turn into. Um, once I got good enough on the guitar, I started trying to figure out how to play and sing at the same time. And fast forward a little bit more time while I'm still doing landscaping, I decided to uh start a cover band and my twin brother who had never even attempted to play drums uh bought a drum set and said well i'll play drums for you and so we just started a little two-man band um long story short after i got my first shows um i just kept building upon that and started playing longer sets started getting a whole lot more shows started building up a following as i went and then i started uh, i was able to build up enough of a following you know, over those first couple of years that I, I was able to get into some of the bigger clubs around Greensboro, Winston, uh, uh, you know, uh, started branching out into Georgia and Florida, South Carolina, um, and was able to start building up followings there. You know, ha had a pretty good Southeast uh, uh, showing every single time I would play a show. And so that prompted me to try to write my own music for the first time because I had all these people showing up. Um, but I was just playing cover songs. So I didn't know how to write a song that down for the first time, uh, wrote my first song. It was not great. Um, and then I continued on and wrote 12 more, um, had a buddy record them there in, in Greensboro, um, who was also, uh, you know, starting out as a, a, a music producer and uh, none of it was great, but you kind of start somewhere and learn from there. Um, I put that out and, and just, you know, uh, people showed so much support and always showed up to every single show that I would play. Um, and that's inevitably what ended up getting me a record deal is because all these songs that I was playing, people would show up and, and singing their hearts out uh, there in the southeast. And Nashville took notice. Um, the next thing I know, I have all these uh, record execs flying out to watch me play. I'd never even been to Nashville, none of it. Um, and it kind of happened in a different way, uh, I think, than it happens for a lot of people. And um, next thing I know, got record deals on the table. Uh, fast forward a little bit. Um, I'm in Nashville living and record my first record and get it, my very first number one on the radio right out the gate. And, uh, here I am on my sixth or seventh song on the radio now, man. It's been been pretty crazy. Um, never in a million years coming from such a small town did I think that something like that would be possible. But uh, the Lord has uh, definitely blessed me beyond my wildest dreams. That There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and, and you mentioned, just to give the listeners a little bit of a um, brief uh, background here, as you, you kind of laid a lot of that out. Um, you had the Chris Lane band, uh, as you mentioned, you've got uh, before pursuing that solo career. And then um, just a few guys uh, that you opened up for Brantley Gilbert, Lee Bryce, Chris Young, among others, moved to Nashville in 2013. As you said, Florida Georgia Line, you opened up for them. Uh, your mm -hmm. debut single was Broken Windshield View um, back in 2014. And then uh, you released your debut album, Girl Problems, in 2016. So uh, a lot of different steps along the way, as you said. Uh, and then 
Finally, in 2021, uh, you were featured on the single Tailgate to Heaven by Canadian country artist Sean Austin. So a lot of different uh, steps and a lot of hard work to get there, like you said, uh, kind of along the way. Um, you ended up getting married. You ended up having a couple of kids. You've got a family now. So a lot of uh, good things, as you said, uh, just a, from coming from Kernersville and having uh, the success that you're at now. Um, when you're not touring, Chris, when you're not on the road, um, what are some of your hobbies that you like to do outside of music for, for fun? Yeah. Um, when I'm not on the road, honestly, even when I am on the road, uh, one of my favorite things in the world to do is to golf. Um, I'm very big <laughs> into that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some, some art country artists love, uh, hunting, some, some love fishing, um, and some love golfing and I fall in that golf category. Um, so I would, I would say if I get any free time, that's what I'm doing. Um, and even out on the road, you know, uh, my tour manager, uh, Brandon Matthews, who is from, uh, Kernersville as well. Uh, he knows exactly, uh, what I want to do and what I want my day to look like. And, uh, there is always golf set up. So that's, that's usually the first thing I do in the morning, get up, go play some golf, come back, eat some lunch, um, get warmed up, do a little sound check, get ready for the show. Um, so I don't do a whole lot outside of that because I'm, I'm here a lot with the kids. You know, right. when, I, when I come in off the road, it is all hands on deck. So yeah. I try try to get my golf in uh, as much as possible out on the road. Yeah. Well, uh, this has been such a great conversation. Uh, Chris Lane, my guest here on Triad All-Stars, part of our uh, Glenn episode series featuring uh, former athletes and coaches from Glenn High School. Uh, Chris, last couple for you here. And as I said, just a great conversation we've had with you. Um, where can our listeners find you on uh, social media or um, where can they follow your uh, career uh, as um, a singer and in music and beyond? Yeah, um, I think I have a website. I am chrislane.com. And then, you know, all the Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, every, you know, whatever's out there, I'm on it. Um, I believe it. I am Chris Lane as well. Um, so they can follow along there. I usually try to keep people as updated as possible. Minus, you know, here lately, I've been a little slower on on everything with uh, a, a one year old and a 12 week old. <laughs> certainly understand uh, certainly understand <laughs> and, and my last question for you uh, uh, kind of open-ended um when you look back uh, as we're circling back to glenn high school when you look mm -hmm. back on your time at glenn football baseball with your brother Corey, and just the memories that you've made there what do you want your legacy to be when people look back on not just your time there but just when you look back um throughout the years when you've been uh, growing up in Kernersville and then going to Glenn High School, what do you want people to remember about your time at Glenn? And, and what are some memories that you look back on and are very fond of at Glenn? Yeah, I mean, I feel like some of my favorite memories um, are definitely on the football and baseball field. Um, uh, I mean, I, I find myself thinking about that constantly and even trying to write uh, songs because that was such a, a great time in my life, one of my favorite periods of my entire life was, was high school there. And, um, you know, just made so many lifelong friends, uh, you know, who we all still keep in touch with today, which is, uh, which is crazy. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I feel like, uh, a high school was, was, uh, at Glenn high school was, was unbelievable. And, um, I tell people all the time, Hey, enjoy high school because it's, it'll be some of the best times of your life. Then you got to get out in the real world. <laughs> uh, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, as you said, uh, it goes by quickly and, uh, eventually, like you said, you're out in the real world and, and, um, we'll, as you are an example, there are different uh, paths you thought you were going to be on and then something circles back around and now you, uh, you're doing something else. So um, Chris has been uh, such a great conversation. Uh, good to talk to you today. Uh, as I said at the top, my guest has been Chris Lane, former baseball and football standout at Glenn High School, uh, then baseball standout at UNC Charlotte, and now a country music singer where he tours around the world. Chris, all the best to you. Uh, thanks for coming on today here at Triad All-Stars. Heck yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it very much. Welcome to Triad All-Stars. Where are they now? 
hosted by Ryan Smith. Hello and welcome back to another episode here on Triad All-Stars. My name is Ryan Smith and my guest today is a former basketball star at Glenn High School at NC State and also played basketball professionally. He is Kevin Thompson. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing great, sir. Um, I thank you for having me tonight. It's so great to have you on, Kevin. Excited about this conversation. Let's start with uh, your background. You grew up in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, talk about growing up and just how sports came about. Um, I grew up in a um, uh, household, a two-parent household, um, mom and dad, little sister. And basketball was always big in my house and sports in general was always big in my house. So um, that's just something I gravitated to. And um, my mom was very supportive as my whole family. So we just had, we just had a, a lot of love and um, a lot of uh, sports. Yeah, and important to have that love as you find those sports uh, for sure. And you end up going to Glenn High School, class of 1989. What is your favorite memory or uh, time there specifically um, playing basketball or uh, something non-athletics related? What sticks out about your time at Glenn High School? I got to say um, the 88-89 season. Um, we won the Frank Spencer and then the deer who came back and went 28 and two. And we just had a lot of fun. Um, we were a world coach team and, um, we were a team that liked each other. And, um, so I, I think, um, the memories I have for those seasons, stick out because we had just had a fun and um or a uh, really really good yeah and, and as you mentioned um class of 1989 that 1888 1989 season uh having those memories with your teammates uh will definitely last a lifetime and then you on transition to college basketball where you uh signed with nc state uh you went there for f- or four years and uh you were a uh, all conference player there. Why NC State? Uh, what made that a good fit for you? Um, I think um, the fact that I could play um, as a freshman uh, really um, got me to think about signing at NC State and then just a legend, Jim Balbano. Um, he, he, when I, when he came to, so, um, also just playing in the ACC, um, as you know, during the mid nineties, um, the ACC had a lot of talent. Um, there were pro players on every team. So, um, the fact, the fact that I could play and I could play at NC state right away, um, really drove or led me to pick NC state. Yes, and uh, as we all know, unfortunately, we did lose Jim Balvano uh, in the 90s, sadly, uh, uh, to cancer. Uh, such a great coach that he was, and, um, someone who definitely made an impact on a lot of guys, not just at the NC State basketball program, but basketball as a whole, for sure. And then um, as you graduated in 1993 from NC State, uh, your pro career then got started, drafted by the Portland Trailblazers in 1993 in the second round. And uh, just to give the listeners a little bit of a insight here, you follow that up with stints overseas, uh, 1994 to 2000 in the Italian Premier League, where you were a two-time All-Star. And then 2000, 2003, you were in the Turkish Premier League, where you were a three-time All-Star in MVP. And then finally, in 2003 to 2008, you played in the Spanish Premier League, where you were a two-time rebounding champion and also MVP there as well, before retiring and hanging up your cleats in 2008. So what was your favorite uh, place to play specifically? (laughs) And uh, what did you learn from your professional career playing basketball? And uh, I I say hanging up the cleats, hanging up the shoes. Uh, Of course, uh, cleats is another sport. (laughs) 
I would say um, Spain, um, the food, the uh, people, the culture, um, the soccer. Um, we, me and my family just had a ball game. So I get Spain is somewhere I live now. So um, yeah, the, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> my time, a lot of people would. my time in Europe. Yeah. So my my time in Europe overall um, was great, and what stuck out was the amount of skill the players had, mm-hmm. and I, I think that we can see now with the amount of players that have gravitated to the NBA. That Spain overall skill of the uh, players, the European players in um, are very skilled players. So I would say that stuck out. Um, the the NBA, of course, is one is a more physical league, but um, the European players are more were um, more skilled at that time. So that stuck out. Um, I would say. Yeah, and then uh, transitioning also to uh, your post-playing career. So 2011, you started working in uh, the EC department at Walkertown High School, um, or uh, Walkertown Elementary, rather, um, and then uh, Walkertown High School, where you've now been for the last eight years. Um, why the EC department and why Walkertown? How, how did that come about? Okay, um, my old high school coach, um, daughter, was the principal um, at Walkertown Elementary. And she invited me up one day to come in and speak to the kids. And once I got up there, I kind of fell in love. And I started to volunteer. And then from there, I went back and got my uh, teaching license um, about eight years ago and transitioned to the high school and started um, working as a high school EC teacher um, in the uh, OCS department. And then I know you mentioned um, off the air, you also uh, recently um, got uh, application for potentially being a principal one day, correct? You also got uh, some more certification done too. Yes, yes, sir. So that's something we'll definitely be watching uh, going forward and uh, hoping you'll be able to meet that dream uh, one day very soon. And uh, at Walkertown High School, you also kept your sports love. Uh, You were coach of the basketball team at Walkertown for four seasons um, before stepping down in um, 2020. Uh, You led the Wolfpack to a Western Piedmont Athletic 2A championship and a conference tournament title along the way. So I'll let you kind of take it from here, um, whatever you like to talk about uh, from your time as the basketball coach. Um, what did you enjoy about coaching uh, at Walkertown, and, and do you miss the sport? Yes, first of all, I miss it a lot. And um, I, I guess what I miss most is just mentoring the young man. Um, I can get that teaching, but I really um, enjoy it seeing young men and women um, take the, their sports to the next level and um, helping them achieve their goals. So that was something uh, I miss dearly. And with my recent um, principal's license, hopefully I'll get a chance to um, continue to mentor young men and women and help them uh, achieve college goals. Yeah, and that, that was well said, Kevin, for sure. And we'll definitely, as I said, be watching that as uh, you uh, continue down that principal licenship. Um, just a couple more questions here, Kevin Thompson, my guest today here on Triad All-Stars. Before we um, close, um, two other questions for you. What uh, hobbies do you like to do outside of uh, when you're not teaching in the classroom or um, obviously not coaching or at this moment? What do you like to do for fun? Well, I would say... Um with my family, um, just family time at movies um, with the wife and kids or my nieces and nephews. Yeah, for sure. And uh, uh, lastly, I, I believe um, uh, listeners would like to know where they can connect with you. Where can they uh, find you uh, on social media or uh, just in a different way? Uh, where, where can they connect with you? <laughs> well, <laughs> 
I'm kind of old school, so I have an email, uh, Kevin Thompson 42 at gmail.com. And that's about it. I can I like to keep it real simple. <laughs> so uh, you're one of those off the grid folks. I, I, I take it. No, no social media <laughs> of any kind. Got yes. It. Yes, it. sir. Okay. Very good. Yes, um, sir. Yes, well, sir. Well, that uh, that does it, Kevin. Um, as I said at the top, my guest today has been uh, Kevin Thompson, former basketball star at Glenn High School uh, from class of 1989, NC State, a uh, class of 1993, and then professional basketball player with stints overseas as well. Kevin, uh, all the best to you and um, best of luck uh, the rest of this school year uh, as you continue to uh, pursue not only uh, impacting young men and women in the classroom, but also uh, that principal's licensure down the road as well. Uh, we will certainly uh, be watching. And thank you for being a guest today here on Triad All-Stars. Thank you, sir.